Greetings, River Lady here, and in this video I'm going to talk about deadheading and pruning chasta daisies, those cheerful yellow and white flowers that grace our gardens throughout the late summer and early autumn seasons. When your chasta daisies have finished blooming, you have a couple of options. You can either just leave the spent blossoms on the plant and let them go to seed. Most chasta daisies tend to be biennials, which means that these seeds won't flower until two years from now. Or you can leave the seeds and let the birds eat the seeds, which I like to do but I also want another wave of blossoms. So what I do with my chasta daisies is I cut that first finished wave of blossoms, cut them off, I'll collect the seed heads so that I can replant them, and then I'll get a second wave of blossoms for the birds. As I mentioned, chasta daisies tend to be biennials, although there are perennial varieties and annual varieties. But biennials means that the plant flowers on basal growth that existed for one full summer. And then the second summer is when you actually see the blossoms. In other words, the seeds that I collect this summer won't give me flowers for another two years. But the flowers that I get next summer will come from the basal growth that is actually at the bottom of this collection of plants that I have here. Perennials bloom every year, biennials bloom every two years. If you want to collect your seed heads, put them in a paper bag and let them dry out over the winter and then in the spring you can plant the seeds to get more daisies. And that's what I'm going to do with this first wave of spent blossoms. I don't worry about taking an angled cut at this point because all I really want to do is just get these heads, these spent blossom heads off the plant before the birds have taken all the seeds. And then I'm going to do the actual pruning which will give me a second wave of blossoms this year. So there we go. There are all my spent blossom heads and I will just take this bag, seal it up and let them dry over the winter. You can see some of the blossom heads are already giving me seeds. So come spring, I'm going to be loaded with chasta daisy seeds. Now that we've deadheaded our chasta daisies, it's time to do some pruning. And I love this part of the process. You're going to look further along the stems and find those tiny buds and then do an angled cut right above the bud. And those little buds are what's going to become our next wave of blossoms. Because by removing the spent flower heads, we're telling the plant, no, no, don't spend any energy on making tons of seeds. Let's spend some energy on getting these buds to be another wave of beautiful chasta blossoms. If you're comfortable, this can be a very zen-like process, hunting for those tiny, tiny baby buds, making that angled cut above the bud. I actually enjoy pruning back chasta daisies because I love seeing what is going to be happening in a couple of weeks. I love seeing the potential flowers that are going to be gracing my garden again. Let's face it, daisies are just so rockin' cool. They're cheerful, they wave in the breeze, the birds love them. They're really cool herbaceous perennials, or in this case, biennials. And there we have it. I'm all finished. I've removed the stems. I've First I removed the spent blossoms. Then I cut the stems back, did my pruning, and now I can see all these little infant buds that are going to be giving me new chasta daisy blossoms. At this point, I'll give the plant some plant food. I'll use flower tone. I'll give the plant a good watering because it has been so very dry this summer. So I'll make sure that the plant is well hydrated. And then I'll make a gin and tonic, sit back, and wait for my next wave of blossoms. 
Okay, so this wraps up this video on deadheading and pruning your Chasta daisies. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, practice social distancing, and get out there and deadhead and prune your Chasta daisies. Happy gardening!